let's get started. Um, I should probably figure out a proper way to start these things out, but um, today I'm drawing over this art piece by Xavier Fox Olyser. I'm just gonna call it Xavier Fox if, I, if, it, if it becomes necessary. So, very first off, uh, the set that they used DeviantArt Muro to draw this, which is like um, a browser-based drawing program. I don't know if you call it a program, it's in the browser. Um, but the point is, like, it's kind of have, you know, limited features. So, one thing I would say, firstly, is that, like, I use Clip Studio Paint to draw, um, but if you want a free program, a, a good free program, I would recommend Krita. I used that before I started using Clip Studio Paint. Krita. It's very good. It has a, a lot of functions, like it's, you know, many features, like, you know, similar to Photoshop or stuff like that. And it, Hell, it's, it even has some features that I'm kind of missing here, but um, would recommend. Now, let's get back into this specific drawing. We got this fox character relaxing on the beach. Um, one thing I wasn't sure about was whether the fox carrots are supposed to have humanoid anatomy or, you know, feral, you know, more animalistic. Like, I was looking through uh, Xavier Fox's uh, gallery quickly to see if I could get a better idea of the, about the character, but, like, all I could find there that they were, you know, feral, animal-shaped. <laughs> yeah. Correct way to say it. But still, this seems more like something in between, so that's kind of what I'm gonna go with, like, you know, those cartoon characters where they can switch between walking on two or four legs, like, kind of like that. Um, again, I'm not, like, if, it's, <laughs> if that's uh, wrong, then I'm sorry, but <laughs> that's what I'm gonna go with. Um, so let's see what we can do. Well, first off, it's a hard pose. Like, I, and because that anatomy, I couldn't even like begin to figure out to try and find reference. So I'm just, I'm just gonna try and do my best. Cause isn't that all everyone can ever do? <laughs> Their best. Oh yeah, one thing I would also say, um, like, I, I don't know about the limits of Deviant Mirror, but I would recommend drawing on a bigger canvas, because uh, this is pretty pixelated, like... <laughs> oh, hello! I was just saying, like, maybe next time, if it's possible, the mirror draw on a bigger canvas, because uh, then you wouldn't end up with it being so pixelated. Uh, but yeah. So. I have kind of like this tilt going on with the eyes, but the snout is not really following it, so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the eyes as like my starting point, cause you know. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Alright, so... Right, so... Get them big ol' eyes in it. And then 
probably snag should probably be more of the, like this kind of angle. cheek fluff would end up here on this side instead. Something like this. And I should probably uh, just up the resolution of this so I can get, I can get more detail in. Hang on. Oof, yeah. That's not a lot of stuff to work with. There we go. Now, compared to this new tilt I have on the head, like the, <laughs> the snout need to be, or the nose itself needs to be twisted about quite a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm not going for super accurate, you know, fox anatomy. Like, they usually have much more slim, narrow snouts, but muscle. But I'm gonna stick with something that's slightly more, you know, cartoony. I move the cheek up on this side, the ear needs to be moved a bit up too. Something like that. Yeah. Great. Oh, now you're actually here, Saber Fox. I can ask is it supposed to be more humanoid anatomy or is it supposed to be feral? Because I wasn't sure. Because, you know, this seems like more like, you know, arms than it looks like legs. So that's just what I was wondering. Right, so... We have some kind of... Sure, this can this arm up here is connected, and then we got the body somewhere in under here. Like this line is probably too low down to get the perspective right. Something more like that. Okay, yeah, because I was kind of interpreted as like, yeah, something in between, like, so that was what I was going to go with anyway, so that's good. <laughs> get the elbow in there and then I'll see if I can remember how to draw a paw. How 
many toes do you get? Yeah, okay. Three toes. something in between the animal hind leg and a human leg. So mm. uh, let's see in that pose it should probably further hiding in between yeah that's because of that I'm also extending the back paw a bit so Good the perspective is on this, but we're trying it. <laughs> and something like that. Uh, and the tail should probably start lower. <laughs> Well, I'm supposed to be trying to help, so you know. So, like, and you know, when drawing tails, it's important to remember, you know, they're an extension of the spine, so they don't, they can't really just come out of the middle of the back. the curves a bit just to make it a bit more relaxed like it's a bit uh, stiff the way it's hold originally Kind of disappearing in the darkles, but there are eyebrows and stuff in there. So there, and it looked like there was a couple of eyelashes. There. All right. Yeah. And then. I don't know how fluffy the <laughs> hit fluff is supposed to be, but I'm just gonna fluff it out just a bit because just so it doesn't look like it's just a fur pattern. And then we got eyeballs. She looks a bit scary without 
eye shine, so we're just gonna quickly add that in so it doesn't look as <laughs> staring. Uh, but yeah, I think that's mostly it for the anatomy. Like, like mostly you'll just, you know, remember to bring in some overlap in some places, like, yeah, you know, like limps overlap, like, you have, have it here, that's good, but you also, you know, have overlap here, and here, and here, like, Stuff like that that helps the figure see more, you know, three dimensional. I mean, I also added some fluff in some places, but I mean, that's just, you know, my personal preference. Like, you know, if that's not how you draw, then <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah. So let's see what we can do out here. Now this was, this doesn't really have any shading or anything. Um, so, oh, I forgot the whiskers. Right, um, so. I'm not gonna do... Yeah. <laughs> so, just some quick things about the background. Like, first off, the brush that you used was very fuzzy. Like, I don't know if you're trying to go for a blur effect or if it's just what you want to use or anything. But one thing probably do was uh, first off make <laughs> good thing I make you still guidelines um, but I'll just have this line be totally straight instead. Maybe. Depending on how close to the edge of the water she's supposed to be, like, or maybe if you wanna, if you're trying to do like, oh my god, that's not very visible, is it? That's better. Like, it, like, Okay, I can understand maybe the fluffy brush on the sky, or maybe even on the wave, but I feel like this should have been more of a sharp line. That would probably work better. Like, I guess, otherwise it kind of works as, you know, if some, uh, something is far away, it can, you know, be a nice effect to make the character pop by blurring it. Like, you can blur it even more. Whoops. I mean, yeah. That could work. And then again. Sharpening up this edge. Yeah. Um, 
Just think I know me. Uh, one other thing is like the colors in general is kind of dark, like. But I mean, that could just be a preference. It's just, you know, makes it a bit harder to see what's going on. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I guess I could also like quickly try and fix up this uh, glass. So is that a little umbrella supposed to be in the drink? Because that seems like, you know, the part of the umbrella or... Oh, what is that? Another thing is, I don't know how well this type of glass would balance on sand, but that's... <laughs> that's a completely different story. So, of course you can't see that on the white background. Um, and then if we just quickly grab... <laughs> yeah, that, that can happen. That can definitely happen and that sucks when it does. <laughs> Too light. Oh, okay, it's balancing on the edge of the glass, like that, I see. <laughs> Fair enough. But yeah, when you do have <laughs> have the things on the right layer, then you can, you know, play around with the opacity to give it a more of a glass-like effect. Um, so, if we just... Okay, this is getting annoying. <laughs> Let's just... So yeah, now we have the glass with its top transparency. Um, oh no, because I blurred it looks like. <laughs> One thing is some very brown sand, like...
so maybe a color more like that that makes the character stand out a bit more too but again I would probably recommend to just Lighten the colors of the character just a tiny, tiny bit. Okay, maybe that was too much. Let me tone it down a bit. Just Something more like that, maybe. Mm. What more? I mean, this went very quick, so I can... I don't know. I guess, since I have the time, I can just kind of go over the new sketch. Why not? But again, I think you would have an easier time just getting your lines to be cleaner and stuff if uh, if you worked on a bigger cabinet. That would definitely make your life easier. If you have any other things you want me to look at, questions about, just ask them because I probably won't have much more to say because I will just be kind of working. But God damn it. <laughs> Sometimes you forget how to draw, and that's okay. Just gotta keep trying. <laughs> okay, see how I kind of fixed the angle of the nose once again. Like you don't have to stick to me skits. Oh there, by the way. I don't know if you used the sketch on the original image, but if you didn't, that's a good idea to do. I mean, obviously, if it was something that had to be done very quickly, maybe in the, you chose not to, but otherwise... This point is just a redraw, but hopefully it gets, you know, the point across seeing the thought process behind it.
see that we get the transparency from the glass. Yeah, I mean, again, and that's fair if it's if something that was done quickly, of course, that's going to be stuff that's rushed. If we can get those eyes to look in the same dang direction. <laughs> I mean, that does make it easier to win if we are the only contestants. <laughs> Gotta say, the eyes kind of still look wonky. There we go, that was probably better. Getting eyes to look in the same direction. Harder than it should be. Wrong layer, wrong layer. <laughs> See, I can do it too. <laughs> Just have all these in a group. Groups are great if you work in a program that has them. Make things much easier to keep organized. I don't know. 
quick disclaimer, the way I uh, color in, that's because of the, the brush I use to make eyeline art. It's kind of have a texture and it's semi-transparent in some places, so if I just use the bucket tool, it, the result would not be very um, pretty. So I need to go a bit of a roundabout about it, but if you have, you know, cleaner line art, then you can just use the bucket tool to fill stuff in. Another good thing is to, when you have the whole figure filled in, then use lock the transparency so you can't, you know, draw outside of what you have. I'm just realized, you know, some time ago that I should probably be better at explaining all of the little things I'm doing to, you know, people who aren't as experienced with data art. Like, who knows, maybe it can help someone. <laughs> but yeah. Locking the transparency is very useful. And hang on a sec, because my computer is running out of power. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Speaking of that, I should probably should save. <laughs> there we go. I mean, at least it gives you a warning when it's time to plug in. Like, it doesn't just... Pew. Beans. Gotta have the beans. Um, throw in some smacklies. not that would be uh no <laughs> plant feet more like plant babies
some whiskers. Oh yeah, one thing you can see it kind of scratchy with the whiskers here. Like, no, it's better to have them in, you know, one long stroke. Uh, but yeah, if I just quickly throw in the <laughs> still have the tip of the old tail sticking up over there, but I mean, if that's what you're going for, of course, but... <laughs> just... I don't know. Have a bit of... Instead of just having a harsh line, it's probably more of a gradient. So, something like that. I mean, I guess then it was kind of accurate, except it's just it's sprawled, <laughs> it's sprawled from the wrong place. Oh yeah, this should probably be more straight, and we should have the horizon on this side too. All right, we're getting somewhere. I guess the sun could go back to the slightly darker color here. Because, you know, wet sand is darker than dry sand. Uh -huh. mm. And the sky should probably be quite a bit like. Whoops. Okay, maybe that's too much. The sky is usually lighter at the horizon line. Just blend that out a bit. Something like that. Rethink that. Originally, you know, the sand had a bit of texture because of the brush you used. That kind of disappeared when I drew this, so I guess I could try to... I mean, yeah. That's... If you're... If the colors is what you're in doubt of, it's always a good idea to find some reference. Like, especially if it's, you know, sky, because there are tons of pictures of sunsets and sunrises and different times of day. Like, 
references. They are always your friend. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, as I said, I end up, you know, I end up making the colors uh, whoops, a bit lighter because, you know, it's kind of hot. To see the details because of how close or how dark they were but I mean that's just the choice I made like you don't have to do that if you don't want to but um, but yeah huh. I guess I could add in the umbrella can communicate it hanging off the glass like Balanced. Oh no, I don't know if you just maybe it seem more plausible if you just kind of placed it on top like that, maybe. Something like that. I mean, unless I'm gonna start adding shading, which seems counterproductive if I'm if, since it's not in the original. I mean, the only thing is, I do love myself a gradient. But again, I don't know if you will, would be able to do this in Deviant Muro. So, as I mentioned before, I mentioned this earlier in the video before you joined. 
Oh, did you hear him flap his ears? <laughs> um, but yeah. But if you want a free program, I can rent Krita. You would be able to do what I'm doing right now. Yeah, that's what I... So... Krita is a free drawing program and it's very good. It has a lot of functions that... Would make life easier. But yeah. Good old... <laughs> Will do. Good old gradients. Just yeah, yeah. I used it before I started using Clip Through Paint, so I would definitely recommend it. And yes, it's completely free. Center her a bit more in the composition. Yeah, no. I mean, the good thing about Clip Studio compared to like Photoshop is that it's uh, it's a one-time payment, so that's something. No, annoying ass. Subscription. I speak good. Subscriptions. So that's definitely a plus about that. That's the main reason I didn't want Photoshop, because God, I don't want to pay a subscription. <laughs> Nice. Hope you like it. So, with that done, <sighs> I mean, Photoshop is also, you know, originally more for, you know, manipulating. You know, photos. They, while Krita is more often, you know, painting, drawing program. So that's that. <laughs> well, see if it works. Maybe you can. If it doesn't work, you can. Uh, maybe it's possible to download an uh, older version. Yeah. I mean, 2000 by 2000 would have been better when, in what was used in this image, but... Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's have a quick before and after. So... Here we have the original image. And... All the stuff I ended up doing, <laughs> kind of ended up redrawing it completely, but here it is.
So with that done, I guess that's all that's left to say is I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something. <laughs> I hope you like Krita. And I'll say bye for now. Thanks for watching.